from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is the Thai Cats This Week with RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker. Hey everybody, welcome to Thai Cats This Week. This is it. Grey Cup on the horizon. The Blue Bombers and the Tiger Cats played the first game of the year, and they're going to play the last game of the year, and we'll see how it turns out. It'll be exciting on Sunday. Of course, I'm R.J. Brighthead, along with Luke Tasker. We've had a, a great year. First off, I want to ask you, you were in the 2019 Grey Cup. What's it? What's it? Well, we're getting some cupcakes, so this is great. We're <laughs> at the uh, convention center. Um, no, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We're at the convention center. Fans are around, so it's great to be immersed in everything here at Grey Cup. Yeah, but, a lot uh, going on here. This is great. You can't eat that cupcake yet, Luke. I know you're not <laughs> playing anymore. That wouldn't have been allowed in your playing days. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but Grey Cup, just the feel of it. What's it like for a, for a player? We know what it's like as fans, most of us. And it's exciting, and a lot of Tiger Cats fans want the success. But as a player, it's yeah. it, you don't have the fun or the nightlife, right? Right, and you know this is a week of this is a party week for for everybody who's not playing in the game. But it, this really is a a hectic week. I mean, this is the busiest week of your of your calendar year as a player. And lucky for the Thai Cats, they could they got to eliminate all of the 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 travel because it, 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 that Tuesday of Grey Cup week is the um, it's a it's just it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, you, good you gotta. Point. You didn't even know you were going, you know, three days ago, right? Yeah. And you got to get everything in order. You're going, you know, most most away games, you're going out there the day before the game. This time, you're going to be out there for all week, so you got to get your family in order. You gotta, you're you starting to get tickets lined up, and it, it, it's hectic. And then once you get there, you know, the players are going to be at the CFL Awards. You know, so yep. they go there, even though they're prepping for a game. They've got, uh, you know, events through the week that they're required to be at. It really is. I, I was talking with Andy uh, fan twos yesterday and like part of like the part of the the success for a player through this week is if they can sort of just like eliminate they can cut away all that stuff have your family get take care of the tickets for you so you don't have to answer calls and texts all the time like you know make it clear that you're not in charge of that and 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 try to like cut through all of the logistical nonsense because it can be a distraction. It's just an incredibly busy week for as, as a player and tiring. But at the same time, it's Tuesday and then all of a sudden it's Sunday. Like it yeah. gets like that. Like it goes goes so quick. So. so along those lines with the travel, you're away from family. Being the home team, you still have that, that family commitment. Um, you want to avoid that distraction, though. That's that's the the challenge that maybe gets overlooked for the Tiger Cats. For sure, a hundred percent. There's a lot of distractions uh, in a week like this, and uh, you know it, it certainly is nice to not travel. But you know, yeah, they still got to figure out the even the Tiger Cats and the Blue Bombers are out. They all got to figure out their ticket, you know, situations with their families and stuff. And it's just there's there's just a lot to a lot to get through. It's a terrible thing to say. Family's a distraction. But <laughs> <laughs> With the great cup, you know, right. you got one game, you can have a lot of family time after. And, yeah. uh, it's it's your career. It's important to win. This episode of Tie Cats this week is presented by Swoop Airlines, the official airline of the 108th Grey Cup. With Swoop, Canada's ultra not expensive airline, you get sky high savings on flights plus lots of aircraft puns. Visit <laughs> flyswoop.com to learn and fly for less than cheap. So you got to listen to Tie Cats Audio Network all through Grey Cup week. In partnership with Swoop, we're giving away two amazing prizes, so a pair of Grey Cup tickets and a pair of round-trip flights anywhere Swoop flies. All you have to do is listen for the Swoop keyword, and we'll give you a different keyword in every piece of content we create this week. So the more you listen, the more chances you have to win flights. Go to ticats.ca slash listen to win. That's ticats.ca slash listen to win for full contest details, terms, and conditions. And we're not giving you the keyword yet. We'll give it to you a little bit later on. That forces you to listen to the whole Ticats This Week show. Go back to that first game. And Winnipeg won 19-6. And it was our first game working together. It was, uh, it was a, a great time. But I go back to that first drive of the, of the Tiger Cats. They go eight plays, 89 yards, Jeremiah Masoli to Jalen Acklin. They score a touchdown. You and I looked at each other and thought, okay, this is going to be another dominant season. Then, and then they didn't score a second-half point for two straight games, and it was uh, it went a little bit sideways for, 
for things. Going back to that game, Luke, can you can you take much from it, or is it so long ago that it's irrelevant now? I tend to to I tend to think it's more irrelevant than meaningful, but it's hard to because it's, you know you get to this point in the season and those that those early games those the, the football that happened in the summer it, it just might as well be three seasons ago it just is so long ago it and feels it feels like a long time ago it does and and, every, and you've gotten better as a team uh, certainly uh, Winnipeg has also changed and, and gotten better and and th- things are just so so different um, you know but but some but but you get into you get onto the field you start prepping and and, and that, that the memories of, of that game specific plays and stuff you, as you start prepping in your film as a player you know those 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 creep up and come back and you have to sort of have to sort of allow yourself to, to be convinced and to realize that we are you know very di- a very different team than 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 what than what was you know months and months ago to back that up Jeremiah Masoli was the starting quarterback. Receivers were Jalen Marshall, Marcus Tucker, Brandon Beggs, Jalen Acklin, and David Ungerer. So no Tim White, um, uh, no Stephen Dunbar. Don Jackson was not the running back. Tunde Adelike, Cariel Brooks, who wound up leading the league in interceptions, they didn't play. Ted Laurent didn't play. So there's a big change for, for Hamilton. The game on, on Sunday, the Grey Cup game, it feels like it's going to boil down to the, the run game. Hamilton's number one run defense. They've allowed 100-yard rushing three times, week one against Winnipeg, week two against Saskatchewan, and week eight against Montreal. But they've gone mm. eight games without allowing a 100-yard rusher. Can they stop Andrew Harris? In week one, it wasn't Andrew Harris. They didn't see him. It was Brady Oliveira. So mm. they have some weapons, but Harris is definitely the guy to key on. Do you think the game comes down to that? Yeah, I, I would I would more so instead of just the run game. I, I think it's the, I think it's just I, I like to say the line of scrimmage. Which team is going to be able to stop the run? Is Don Jackson going to be able to get that five yards a carry? You know, six yards a carry. On that, that, can Don Jackson put the team in second and four uh, r- repeatedly throughout the night? Uh, and can that offensive line make it happen for the Tie Cats? And then and then defensively, which team is going to be able to to stop that uh, that run game? Now. It's a passing league. The CFL is a passing league, yeah. right? And so it's not. It wouldn't be. It's not no surprise that you know we're going to see uh, Zach Claros and Dane Evans uh, air air the ball out for sure. But I, if 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 Andrew Harris or Don Jackson can can not be a factor, if those D lines, if that if that if those uh, linebacking cores can can cause those guys to not be a factor, I think that's going to be huge for for whichever team has success there. Um, but also, what I'm interested in is this pass rush. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna be really interested, interested to see which, which, uh, which teams, uh, D line, D ends are gonna be able to create a, a more hectic situation for the quarterbacks. Um, really, really talented groups on both sides. Yeah, you're, you're so right. And we've seen Jagera Davis elevate his play. He was good all year, but for a, a big man, he is just so quick he sees that that hole that opportunity and he he bursts for it including the playoffs this year he has 10 sacks four sacks in the two playoff games uh, that whole d-line is has been dominant and it seems like it takes a, a big play in these playoffs to get the tiger cats offense going in that mm. semifinal against montreal it was really the julian hauser fumble recovery that he yeah. he rumbled down and, and put the tie cats <laughs> in a good spot and of course the poppy white uh, punt return do they need a quicker start on offense or just wait for that that turning point play no i do i, I think i think they absolutely need to find a, a a quick answer early in this game i don't know I can't, I can't, this isn't scientific what I'm about to say, okay? okay. So this is not, this, I don't have stats to back this up. I just feel in my gut that I don't think either of these teams is going to give up a, a, a lead. I think if we see this, if we see this going one way in the first half, we're not going to have something like the East final that we saw with, with Toronto, with Toronto Hamilton. I really don't think we are. I think these teams are, are both Good enough to, to 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 not give up that lead if they if they get it early. So I, I am going to be very interested to see how quickly the Hamilton offense can, you know, be productive and and, and find and find some find some answers. It, it, you string those two and outs together early in the game. I don't think Winnipeg is going to uh, going to sit around long enough to, to, to keep this thing in uh, 
uh, you know, to keep this game close. I think I think one of these teams is gonna is gonna take an early lead, and I think that might be the how we see it at the end. This is scientific. I'm going through my stats, and your gut feeling has been right every time this year. <laughs> <laughs> I keep track of that. There you go. You check the charts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good, good. But it makes sense. The two top defenses in the league, if one of the teams can get going on offense, that would clearly yeah. indicate that they would have an advantage. I think so. I, I just don't think we're going to see a, a – a, 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 I, think, I think this first half is going to be huge for, for the outcome of this game. You look at the season, I know we've talked about it a little bit, the um, the injuries, the three quarterbacks for the Tiger Cats, those two losses coming into the year, even though Orlando Steinauer was trying to deliver the message that we're a different team, 20 new players. So we like to be favorites, but we are a much different team. So we tried to, to downplay <laughs> that, but going into that Winnipeg game, I remember... Bombers fans were upset that Tiger Cats were favored in that game, and as it turned out, they probably shouldn't have been the way Tiger Cats played early on. But the buys came after two losses. Uh, those turnovers early in the year, the um, quarterback sacks they were allowing early in the year, a lot of talk yeah. about the offensive line, the lack of yardage on first downs. There was always seemed to be something to work on every week. Every time we had Tiger Cats this week, it was, okay, can they fix this? Can they... Uh, be better in the fourth quarters and finally first time all year they've strung together back-to-back -back fourth quarters where they've outscored their opponent they're doing it at the right time are they peaking at the right time uh, I certainly think they are they they early in the season one of the key issues that they were struggling with was their offensive line Chris Van Zyl was hurt for most of the first part of the season they've in, in as the year progressed Darius Soraka was in and out of the lineup they've had a lot of adversity there and uh, that sort of goes I mean it, it doesn't go unnoticed we were all talking about it but but in a, the flow of the game it, it's more impactful than you may than you may realize you know and I think that that unit is cohesive now the offensive line uh, <laughs> the, the quarterback controversy sort of never ended this year right <laughs> like yeah even when Jeremiah Masoli was playing great right it it still hovered around the team it was really really odd that's still been going on, and now uh, Dane had an unbelievable <laughs> performance in the East Final, and they're going to go uh, with him for, for this game. But it certainly is a uh, certainly is a, a different team, and a different team than the year started out. Um, uh, but but it, football, it, the games are. It, it's just so funny to me. I, I always found, I always felt as a player, it got over overanalyzed in some senses this this 100 percent doesn't matter who's favorited in that first game doesn't matter who anybody one play can swings the game either way and and yeah. and, and that moment momentum is a real thing in football it's a real real thing and once you get that and capitalize on that it doesn't matter who is who, it doesn't matter what the stats say about the last game or whatever it, it, it really starts to change things and yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, a a great a great matchup. Yeah, you talked about Dane Evans gonna be the quarterback. Had a perfect passer rating, uh, sixteen for sixteen when he came in. It was probably good. He he was close to perfect, perfect passer rating, perfect. Uh, didn't throw an incompletion, so we can call it perfect. Um, scored a couple of touchdowns himself. It just made the the decision for the coaches a, a little bit easier. If he was just okay in that East final and they still came out with a victory, it might have been more of a, a topic, but don't you think that the way he performed, you, it made sense to give him the start in the Grey Cup? I, I do. I, he, he just played so well in that East final and came in, you know, uh, a, you could presume that he, he probably didn't even expect to play at all in that game. And uh, Coach O said it in his uh, post game interview. They just needed a spark. They were just yep. looking for anything to, to sort of get get uh, you know change the 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 lull of of what their first quarter was. And uh, he just did s such a good job that it almost makes it a non a non uh, question. You know, like he 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 clearly uh, earned his way to to get the start in this game. And would, it would be very surprising if they didn't go with a guy who played that way in the East final. Are you a superstitious guy? Not particularly, no. Okay. <laughs> but also, I am, uh, you know, 
everything about me is changing now that I'm in the booth and on the field. So who knows? Maybe I will be uh, soon. <laughs> Wear the same stuff you've worn in the in the playoff games. What about uniforms? I've been keeping track of that. <laughs> uh, I love it. You know, you're great at the you're great at the uh, the coaches challenge stats. You're always right on the money with uh, you know yep. there are three of five. There, you know, I like <laughs> the useless stats. Yeah, the useless stats. I love it. I've I've come to love these things. And uh, and, and the uniforms. That is an interesting one. So yeah, fill us in here. Well, well it, it was funny because I've kept track all year and going into the Argos game in the East final Tiger Cats were wearing the white tops with the black pants yep. and they were 0 for 4 and I remember saying to you before the game should I bring this up I don't think I should bring this up <laughs> and you said don't don't touch it and never even brought so that was their first win in that combination of the white tops and the black Amazing. pants I don't know if anyone with, on the team keeps track of that sort of thing or any fans <laughs> do but I thought it was fun just to look at so it appears they're going to wear black and gold, the black tops and the gold pants. That's the, the class, classic Ticat combo, right? It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, great. It's beautiful. Do you think they have a good record in those? Do you want to guess? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. So if they had... <laughs> Putting you on the spot here. Yep. So if they had seven home games this year <laughs> where they had a black... <laughs> So you are scientific. <laughs> <laughs> are they two and two? Uh, no, better than that. Three wins and one overtime loss. The Montreal uh, oh. game, the overtime loss on uh, That's the awesome. last play to Eugene Lewis in the end zone on third and 20 and then won it in overtime. So they do have a good record in the black and gold. So Ticats fans, that if you're superstitious, <laughs> black with the gold pants is a, is a good combo. Perfect. Going into Grey Cup, um, you've been... With the Thai Cats, you were with them in 2019. Is there anyone that has a speech? Is it the coach? Do you think a player will step up? What What can you take us in the locker room in, in that situation? Yeah, I think it's no surprise to, to uh, Thai Cats fans that Orlando Steinauer is very much so a this is just the next game that we have to play type of coach, right? Um, certainly, uh, there's you know you have to. It, just the week is different uh, regardless of, of what's said or what's done. Like everyone is just, there's so many more responsibilities, great cup week. So everything feels different. Uh, it's a, it's a effectively a national holiday and you're, you're the, you're the main event. Right. And so it does the, the energy in the, in the uh, drama starts to build as the week goes on. But coach O certainly is sort of, um, you know, takes that, takes that, uh, you know, side of it where it's we've been doing this all year type of thing. You know, don't. Yes, it's a bigger game. It means more. It's it's a it's it's for the the Grey Cup. But this is just another football game like we've been doing all year. Like you as a player, like you guys have been doing your whole lives. Go out there and do your job and 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 take a deep breath. This is just another football game. But I think that you then also have. Uh, a, a little bit, uh, there's a little bit extra internal sort of uh, outspoken leadership. Some some guys will certainly, um, you know, uh, share their thoughts on the game or on, on the team. They'll sort of, you know, you, you kind of lay it out all, all out on the table, you know, for your teammates. And um, it's funny, too, every player is going to be a little bit different about a game like this. You know, some guys are going to, some guys are going to be, change their, change their style of prep like you know some guys can't can't help but uh but uh you know this is the great cup and i'm gonna i'm gonna you know get do everything i can and there's some guys and i think i fell into this category where you just shoot nothing nothing else you can do than what you've always done you just go out there and 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 play the best way that you have but uh i'll say the last three great cups that the tigers have been in we they we always went out west we are always a huge big trip all you know it was yeah. just a big you know big affair of just all sort of logistics and things so now at home black uniforms where i always wore i had always, always had to wear white for gray cups you know <laughs> yeah, it, right. it, it's a much more uh, it, it's a comfortable thing in some ways i don't know what it, how uh what, what it would be like to play in a home gray cup and and it, my, I, it's got to be well it's got to be better right <laughs> in my opinion yeah all right so it's time for the keyword to enter for your chance at gray cup tickets as well as round trip flights to anywhere swoop flies Luke, the key word for this show is? Chuck Ely. What is it? Chuck Ely. Nice. You've got to go to ticats.ca slash listen to win to enter for all contest details. That's ticats.ca slash listen to win and enter the keyword Chuck Ely. 
Good luck. Keep listening for more chances uh, to win. That's exciting, huh? And they, if you're not getting your Grey Cup, Grey Cup tickets for free from from our <laughs> yeah. our oh, uh, uh, Tyca Audio Network and Swoop. That's right. Then you're going to have to pay a, a <laughs> big buck for them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like they're going for a pretty penny. <laughs> just just finally here, Luke. Um, 2019 Tiger Cats were favored. Some turnovers fell behind. Was there a different feel on the sideline? I'm, I'm only asking that because Winnipeg would be slightly favored here, I, I would think, even though the, the Tiger Cats had a, a really good year. So if the Tiger Cats can reverse that and, and jump on Winnipeg, can you remember what the feeling was like on the sideline? Yeah, it was um, It was one of those games, uh, and the unfortunate truth is things started to go wrong quickly, and they started to compile. And, you know... Um, Things we didn't expect Winnipeg to do uh, have, for instance, having have some downfield passing uh, that was impactful in the game. They did it early and they did it very well, and and, and it got and it really got out of hand uh, early. We had those we had turnovers um, in the first half that were costly. Um, you know, it is interesting though because of course the 2019 the best best regular season in Ticats history in 2019 and and and. We're, the Ticats were favored to uh, win that game, and, and in a lot of ways, that's sort of the in, the the inverse this year. So, yep. <laughs> interested interested to see if that uh, that trend carries. Sort of the, uh, the the underdog, so to speak, uh, 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 can can carry the day. But uh, like I said, that stuff is all that was two two years ago. I mean, the, the whole world has changed since then. Yeah, you know? it sure and, has. And uh, it, it's just going to come down to who who can who can capitalize on opportunities and make fewer mistakes in that first half. Is it tough for you being on uh, not on the field, getting ready for a Grey Cup game? You know, this week, yeah, like this week is uh, you know, this is what football is all about. I mean, this is why uh, this is why you wanted to be a football player uh, from when you were a kid. So, yeah, this week is just the best. Uh, you know, I think. It's I'm I'm like any other Ty Cat fan. I would do I would love to be out there playing, right? Like I'd, it's just that'd be to be a part of those guys on the field. But uh, uh, you know, it's the rest of the year that that uh, only the guys who are out there are willing to sacrifice and work for to be there, and that's why they've earned earned uh, a chance to to make it happen for the Ty Cats on Sunday. And uh, you know what? I'm I RJ. I just think uh, our our spot in the booth is warm. You know, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you don't get tackled. No, not many bruises up there. Nope. <laughs> you got a great view of the field for the game on the sidelines. You really don't. You can't see much on the sidelines. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so very, very, very much so happy with uh, with uh, what what my role uh, is. But uh, this is a great. This is just. This is why every little kid wants to play football is for the chance at the Grey Cup. Yes, exactly. Well, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed our, our first year on the Ticats Audio Network calling the games. Luke, it's been a pleasure to be beside you for these games. As and, have I. And, you know, we'll keep our uh, our eyes on the game and see if the Tiger Cats can get the Grey Cup. Awesome. I, this will be my – I'm watching this game from the stands. I'm very excited. I've obviously never watched a Ticat game from the stands, never been in there during a uh, – performance so I'm, i can't wait to just kind of see see what this looks like uh you know from uh from the uh tim hortons field uh stadium it'll be exciting it's been a special season uh, a lot of adversity for the tiger cats they've overcome it they're peaking at the right time we launched the tie cats audio network so much going right right now and maybe the tiger cats first gray cup since 1999 the bombers and tiger cats on sunday for the 108th Great cup. That's it for Ticats this week. We appreciate all of you listening.